Hey everyone and welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be making an item that's actually super nostalgic for me. It's something that I actually purchased, not the pattern, but a finished version of this before I ever started sewing. Today we are making a divided, divided basket and this pattern comes to us from Noodlehead. Now this basket, look at this, it's so cute. Who doesn't want a basket? It's a big basket too, I'll show you. I mean look, it's, it's like as wide as I am. It's a pretty big basket. It has two sections. Now I have a dark interior, so it might be hard for you to see, but it is completely divided. There is not like a slip underneath this divide here. It is two completely divided sections. On the front here, we have a slip pocket on the front where you could add multiple pockets. The back doesn't have an accent pocket, but you could definitely add the same pocket on the back if you'd like. It's got a couple of cute little handles here and I just really, really love this little basket. Now here's the thing, whenever I was pregnant with my first kiddo, I was buying all kinds of accessories for the baby room, the nursery, right? And one of the accessories I bought was a basket exactly like this. I mean, I'm pretty sure the person made it off of this pattern. Now I bought it off of Etsy and it was just a diaper basket. I just wanted to put diapers in one side and lotions and powders and all those things on the other side. And so I bought it and it was my favorite thing. I mean, I used it for all my children and I, I can't believe I don't have it anymore, but I must have gotten rid of it or donated it. But I loved that basket so much and I never in all those years thought that I would like make it myself. When I was perusing patterns for a tutorial today, I came across this one from Nittlehead and I was just like, oh my goodness, that's my basket. So here we go. We're making the basket, it's so cute. And while it is great for babies, if you have anybody in your life who's expecting their first child, second child, however many children, this is a great, great item for babies, kids, anything like that. It's a great item for everybody because it's a thing that keeps everything organized. I mean, in a craft space, you can use it for all kinds of things. You can put a bunch of threads over here. You can put your scissors and all kinds of other tools over here. In your bathroom, you can use it for cosmetics, for your hair products. I mean, for your teenagers, they can use it for all kinds of things. If you have, you know, sports stuff, they could put sports things. In. I mean, there's just so many things. You could put this in your car and you could have like one side be like a little mini trash can, just put like an old grocery bag in there. And the other side could be for like snacks or it could be your snack bag, chips and stuff over here, candies over here. I mean, you know, I could go on and on and on because I got a lot of stuff, okay? I'm, I'm not ashamed of it, but I do have a lot of stuff and keeping it organized is like a full-time job <laughs> because although I have a lot of stuff, I do not like clutter. So I am always looking for cute ways to organize my stuff. So thank you so much to Noodlehead as always for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. We love Noodlehead so much over here. The patterns are written perfection. They're perfection. They are so easy to follow. This pattern is no exception. It comes together very quickly. It is very simple. There is one spot that I think a lot of you are going to go, I don't want to do that, but you're going to do it and you're going to love it. And you're going to see that there's not a big, not a big deal. I'm not going to tell you yet what it is. You got to go through the tutorial. You're going to go through the tutorial and you'll see, you're going to love this basket. Just, just give it a try. Promise me you'll give it a try. If you're interested in making a basket, please try this one. If you're new to the Oakers YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, any other patterns you want to see from Noodlehead, leave them down in the comments section. We do have plans to go through a lot more of their bags and they keep coming out with new ones as well. But you know, sometimes some of the patterns can be a little bit more advanced, a little more intermediate. And I really wanted something that was quick, easy, beginner friendly. And I think this is a winner, winner chicken dinner because besides that, it's super useful. And that's the goal, right? You can find quick patterns, you can find easy patterns, but they're not always the most useful patterns or they're not really maybe items you want to have in the end. This is an item I personally love, so I hope you do too. All right guys, let's get started. So for this, you're gonna need about a half a yard of exterior fabric. And the exterior fabric I'm using today is quilt cotton. You could use a lot of different things here. If you wanted to go with like a vinyl or a faux leather, uh, be a little careful because we do have some finagling we have to do with the seams that might be tricky with vinyl and it's a lot easier with quilt cotton. So I'm using quilt cotton for everything exterior except for the lining. So for the exterior, I have this beautiful quilt cotton. Also for the accent, you're gonna need about a fat quarter if you wanna do an accent pocket. Um, if you just wanna, if you wanna skip the pocket or you wanna use the same material over here, just make sure you have a little bit more than a half a yard. But if you're gonna use an accent 
pocket, about a fat quarter of that. And then you're gonna want about three quarters of a yard of lining material. For my lining material, I'm using water resistant canvas. Water resistant canvas is my go-to most of the time because it's just so easy to work with. So that's what I'll be using. And again, you're gonna need about three quarter yards of that. Next up, we have our interfacing. You're gonna want some woven interfacing. And again, it just depends on the material you're using. If you're using water resistant, waterproof canvas for the outside and the inside, for the exterior and the lining, then you don't need any woven interfacing. But if you're using cool cotton, you're gonna to wanna to add some woven interfacing. I'm pretty much adding this to every piece of quilt cotton except for the strap accent. That I wanna keep super loosey goosey. But other than that, I'm adding this everywhere. Then you're gonna want some sort of a stabilizer, either a foam or a fusible fleece. I really like the fusible fleece. I feel like it's just a little bit easier to work with. And you're gonna want anywhere between a yard to half a yard, depending on how you're gonna be using it. Next up, you're gonna want half a yard of one and a half inch wide webbing, ribbon, whatever you wanna use. Um, I'm using this beautiful webbing from Wonderground Fabrics, but just, just make sure it's one and a half inches wide. If you wanna use a one inch wide one, you can, but you're gonna to need to mess with the measurements of the fabric piece to go with it. But any sort of ribbon or webbing that's one and a half inch wide is gonna be great for the handle. Unless you decide you don't want to use this at all for the handle, there is an option for an all fabric handle and you can just build your own. However, that's not what I'm doing today. And then I always like to have a custom bag tag to go on all my makes. So now let's go through all the pattern pieces. First one up is the main exterior. This is my quilt cotton. I just have two cuts of this. On the back of these, I have a woven interfacing already applied and the woven interfacing goes to all of the edges. It covers the entire piece of material. And then I have my fusible fleece. And you can see I cut down my fusible fleece on the sides in the top and bottom by half of an inch. So I just use this and then I cut it down a half of an inch, sides, top and bottom. I didn't cut it down in the box corners because it's really not that big of a deal to sew them there. But I do wanna reduce the bulk up here, especially along the top edge, because again, we're gonna be finagling that later and we wanna make sure this area up here is as easy to work with as possible. Next up is the front pocket. This is optional. If you don't wanna do a front pocket, then just don't do it. But you're gonna want one cut of your exterior material or your accent fabric. And for that, I have a quilt cotton, which has woven interfacing already on the back of it. And then you're gonna want a lining cut of material. And for me, that is that water resistant canvas. Next, we have the divider for the basket, which is what makes this basket really cool is that it has a central divider thing. So you have two buckets in there, which is nice. For that, you're gonna have two cuts of your lining material. If you're using quilt cotton for this, one of these needs to have a woven interfacing on it and it's only gonna go up as far as the dash line. Since I'm using water resistant canvas, I don't have any interfacing on these. And then you're gonna have four cuts total, but two mirrored of the lining. So you're gonna have two cuts just like this. So this is not a cut on the fold one like the other ones were. You're gonna have two cuts just like this and two cuts like this. So when they're next to each other, you can put them together like that. And finally, I have my little fabric handle cuts. Now there are two options for this. There's the option to build your own fabric handles using just fabric, no webbing. And those cuts are gonna be a little bit bigger than these ones. Or you can do what I'm doing today, which is where you have a smaller cut and we wrap it around the edges of our webbing and it gives it a really cool look. It's a type of, it's a type of like bag strap, handle thing I've been wanting to do for a while, so it's, I'm really excited to do that today. All right, here's pretty much all the other stuff I'll be using today. Lots of clips, clips are gonna be helpful. Also lots of double-sided tape. I have two sizes here. I have an eighth of an inch and also a quarter of an inch. Double-sided tape, we're gonna be using a lot of it, especially when we close up the end, when we top stitch the top. And then I have my thread, my top thread, which is going through the needle, is a Tex 45 weight thread. It's, it's kind of thick. It has a really beautiful top stitching because it is so thick. But because it is so thick, it does not work in my bobbin at all. Uh, so in my bobbin, I'll be using a Guterman thread. However, your bobbin thread will be showing a lot, especially in the top stitching in the end. So make sure it's a color or a thread that you like working with and that you don't mind being seen in the end. If you're worried about your top stitching being a little bit too noticeable, I do suggest finding a color that blends really well with your fabric um, or even like a variegated thread. So like this is called fairy floss, which means the color changes along the thread. and that actually is really good at hiding any sort of wonky top stitching. The needle I'm using today, as always, is a Microtex 8012. I have my small one inch by six inch ruler, an air erasing marker, a vinyl pen, and a chalk marker. I like to have lots of options when I'm marking material. I just never know which one I'm gonna need. 
Then I have my seam ripper and stiletto combo, and then my stiletto. My stiletto is what I keep at the sewing machine, and it just helps me guide the material without me having to worry about getting my fingers a little too close to the needle. I have a lighter. A lighter is always very good at cleaning up threads. You don't want to leave those little tails sticking out. It doesn't look very good, so just clean them up with a lighter. And then a small pair of scissors is going to be helpful because we will be cutting while we're sewing. Uh, so some like, small scissors like this. Not snips, not thread snips, but small scissors are great. So once you have all your interfacing attached to your materials, we're going to start with the divider pocket. So take your two divider pocket cut pieces and lay them right sides together and clip along the top straight edge, just the top straight edge for now. Now we're going to sew along this top edge at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once we have these sewn, I'm just a creature of habit and I always like to cut down corners. We don't have a whole lot of bulk in this and I didn't do this when I made the first basket, so you don't have to clip corners a lot here, but Again, I'm just so used to working with thick material that I just do it. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna flip it wrong sides together. So when we do that, I like to lift up one and just finger press. If you wanna grab an iron and press this with an iron, it's gonna stay a lot better that way. And I'm gonna do the other one, same thing, lift it up, press the seam. And by doing it both like that, then when I pull them back together, it's not all bubbly. It's already pretty nice and flat. And then I like to line up the bottom raw edges, so these little corners down here. Get those lined up and clipped together. And then just make sure the top edge is nice and flat. And I'm gonna add some clips along here as well. Again, if you ironed it, then you don't need to add clips because it'll stay nice and flat then. All right, now I'm gonna top stitch along this top edge first at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then at a three eighths inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to base down the sides and the bottom of my whole rectangle at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that all sewn, if you haven't already, on your divider pocket template, you have these little tiny dots here where it says to transfer to fabric. Make sure you do that. Um, you don't have to do it right away, but you do wanna make sure you have those dots. Those will help us get started once we combine this with the rest of the lining. So I just poked a hole out using my stiletto, and now I'm using some sort of marking tool that I can see, making sure I know where those dots are. All right, you can put this to side for just a moment. Now grab your four lining cuts. And we have two face like this, two face like this. You're gonna grab one on the left and one on the right, and you're gonna bring them right sides together. And you're gonna do the same with the other set. So we pair them up, so when they're right sides together, they match up perfectly. The boxed bottoms are on the same side. And the sides we're worried about right now are the sides next to the boxed corner. So here on the left side, the left side and the bottom side, over here on the right set, the right side and the bottom side. The long side right here in the center, we're not worried about that right now. We're just worried on the outer side and the bottom. Go ahead and clip them together along those two edges. And before we move on, over on the bottom corner here of your template, it says on the wrong side of the fabric, mark the B where this is. So just make sure you do this. So we should be looking at the wrong side because our two materials are right sides together. So this is the wrong side. So down here, I'm just gonna draw a little B so I know that's where that goes. And then if I flip this over, that B is right here. So I'm gonna draw a B here as well. There we go. So that way we just have those marked. So now we're gonna sew along these clipped edges at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have those sewn, we're gonna box these bottoms. So kind of open up your lining like this so that the corners of these boxed bottoms go away from each other and the seams come together. And you're gonna to want to press open these seams at least down here where they connect. And again, if you wanna grab an iron to do that, go ahead. But line up the two seams so that they come directly together and then grab a clip and clip them right at the center. And just, you can go down here to help separate it so that you get a nice straight edge here where we're boxing this bottom. And again, just do your best to finger press this open or iron open the seam. I'm only worried about right here for now. Um, I'm not so worried about the other part. So repeat this with your other lining. All right, once you have those clipped, we're gonna take both of these to the sewing machine and sew along these clipped bottoms at a half inch seam allowance. Once again, backstitch at the beginning and the end. And once those are sewn, Let's trim down that seam allowance. I just cut it in half. You can use bigger scissors if you need to. It's kind of tricky with these little scissors. It's just what I have What I have next to me. All right, once we have our lining box like that, we're gonna grab our divider pocket and we're gonna to put together the lining, which is really cool. So you're gonna take your lining piece and lay it so that the shorter edge, so see it's kind of like a paper airplane with the longer edge and the shorter edge. The shorter edge is wrong side up. Just keep pressing that seam open if you need to. 
And then take your divider pocket and we're gonna fold this in half and just mark, just mark the midpoint on the bottom edge. The bottom edge is where the little tiny boxed bottoms are. Just grab some scissors or something. So mark the midpoint there. And you're gonna take your pocket and you're gonna lay it right side down. No, both sides are right because it's right side out. But you're gonna lay it right side down and you're going to lift up the short edge like this so that our pocket comes right sides together with the right side of the lining. So the center clip we just marked on the center of the bottom of our pocket is gonna line up with that seam. See, so you see how I'm just taking this and just kind of like whoop, lifting it up like that and then matching up the center mark with the seam. Clip together at the center and then just clip along the straight edge. So obviously this bottom edge here is not going to extend like corner to corner. It's not supposed to, it just goes like this. So now this part is a little technical Stick with me, okay? You got this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this so we're looking at the right side of our divider pocket, just like this. We're gonna start anywhere in the center. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, just somewhere in the middle. And we're gonna sew at a half inch seam allowance. We're just gonna sew along this edge, starting in the middle, until we get to this dot. Remember that little dot we made using the template? Make sure that needle lands in that dot, okay? Once you get to that dot, we're gonna grab some scissors, and you can even do this ahead of time, I do. And I'm just gonna cut, so you see how I have like a little box corner here, and I have a, I have a part of the corner that's going straight up from the edge of my lining. I'm just gonna follow that line, and I'm gonna cut about 3 eighths of an inch. So it's, it's just about as high as the corner of that little boxed piece there. And you see, by doing that, what's gonna happen is I'm going to twist this. So, this is something you can do ahead of time. It might be easier at the sewing machine, it might be easier to do it this way. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you both, okay? I'm gonna do it at the machine this time, and then when I do the other side, I'll, I'll do it ahead of time, I'll show you. But what we're gonna do is, as the needle is in that dot, we're gonna pivot our entire lining unit here, and then we're going to twist this lining cut up so that it matches up with that cut down there See, and then you're going to just line it up, move it out of the way and continue on. The divider pocket does not come all the way to the top of the lining piece. It goes just like this. So watch me do it at the machine first and then on the other side, I'm gonna clip it all ahead of time and just sew it together once. So let's do this first at the machine. Okay, so did you see how I did that? How I straightened out this lining piece and then flattened it out underneath and twisted the top? Because then what happens is you get something like this, you see? Isn't that cool? So now we're gonna repeat with the other side, but for the other side, I'm gonna pre-clip everything so I'm not twisting it at the machine. So to do that, once again, it's a little tricky because it's all, it's a three-dimensional product now. <laughs> but I'm gonna make sure the bottom edge here is still nice and, nice and flat, nice and straight where I clipped it. You know, I haven't sewn over here yet. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut into my lining, matching it up with that edge right there of the little boxed part of the divider pocket, cutting 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna add a couple clips here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist this here. So I'm just twisting the bottom here so that this seam right along the edge of my lining is gonna match up with the seam of my divider pocket. See, I'm just twisting it up. There we go, and then clipping it together. So you see I have, it's kind of a mess down here, but that's okay, if I pull it, now it's a nice little box. Once again, the top of the divider pocket does not come all the way up to the top of the lining. It's not supposed to. But there we go, now I have it just like this. And now what I can do is I can actually go to the sewing machine and just sew along the edge and the bottom at a half inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna go until I meet up with my original stitching, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Now we have that completely sewn on, and you see you have half of the divider pocket added. Isn't that cool? I think that is so clever. I love it. So now we have to attach the other lining panel. We're gonna do it pretty similarly. We're just gonna pretty much go over these uh, stitches. So take your remaining lining panel, flatten out that seam. Again, we're worried about the shorter bit here. So this right here is the bottom. Shorter bit, flatten it out. Grab your divider pocket. So we have our lining that already has the divider pocket in the middle and the side of the divider pocket that's not attached to a little bucket here. We're gonna line up the bottom midpoint of that divider pocket with this seam. 
Again, material right sides together, just like we did on the other side. It can be kind of hard to visualize because now we have a lot more going on. But again, it's just divider pocket right side together with the lining. Line it up just like this and clip along this edge. And we're just gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. So you, it might be easier if you have the stitching facing up so you can see where you've already stitched and just go right over it. So starting in the middle again, sew at a half inch seam allowance. Once you get to the pivot point over here, trim into your lining and then pull this up and rotate it, lining it up. So you see we have a lot, push this stuff out of the way. You're gonna line up this edge with the edge that's already sewn. And this time the top of the lining panel should come up with the top of the other lining panel, not the top of the divider pocket, but top of lining panels should meet up at that edge just like that. So we're gonna do that at the machine on one side and then we will do it on the other side as well. So it's not difficult to do that, but you do want to try to do whatever you can to make it as easy as possible. So if that means transferring the marks, like I was showing you at the sewing machine where I just kind of used my stiletto to poke where I needed to put a mark so I knew where to sew, then do that. So once you have that all sewn, let's just trim down this seam going around the center of this divider pocket in half, just leaving it at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, we're now done with the lining portion. You can set your little pocket to the side for now. Now let's work on the front pocket, and if you don't want to do a front pocket, then skip this, but I'm gonna do it. So take your exterior and your lining piece and lay them right sides together. And we're specifically looking at matching up the top long edge. Grab your clips and clip them together along that top edge. And now let's sew along this edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Once you have these sewn, I'm going to clip the corners down once again, just to help reduce bulk later. And now we're going to press these wrong sides together. So just like I did with the divider pocket, I'm just gonna finger press it, doing one side at a time. But again, it is gonna have a crisper top seam if you use an iron here. And then when I flip them wrong sides together, I like to line up the boxed corners down here and clip those together first. And then let's just press either finger press or press with an iron along this top edge. And I'm gonna use clips to keep it nice and flat. And now we're gonna top stitch along this top edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then do a second row of top stitching at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, now before we add the bag tag, think about how you're gonna to wanna to divide up these pockets because you could do a center pocket right down the middle right here so you can have two separate pockets or if you're gonna do one big pocket, think about that now because you don't wanna put your bag tag here and then have to draw, do a stitch right down the center of your bag tag. So I think my bag tag, I'm just gonna center it again. So to do that, I'm just gonna find the midpoint along this top edge that I've just top stitched by folding it in half. And I'm gonna grab an air racing marker so I know it will go away. And I'm just marking right, right along my stitching so I know where the midpoint is. I'm gonna grab a little bit of double-sided tape to add to the back of my tag. And I'm just gonna center this about a quarter inch to a half of an inch below that lower stitching right there. There we go. And now I'm going to lift up the lining so it's out of the way. I don't want to top stitch through the lining, only the exterior. So I'm gonna take this to sewing machine and I'm just gonna top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you find it's a little tricky because the seam is here, just move your bag tag down a little bit lower. So now grab one of your exterior pieces and lay it right side up and then take your pocket piece and lay it exterior right side up, lining side down and match it up with the sides and the bottom box corners here and use your clips to hold this in place. And now let's go to the sewing machine and we're just going to baste along all of these open edges between the pocket and the exterior at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's basted, I took a long ruler and I measured one inch up from the top of these box corners here. So just one inch up from here and drew a horizontal line going down the entire pocket panel. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go to the sewing machine and we wanna top stitch right over that marked line and this is just going to make sure that the pocket doesn't extend down because this is gonna be the bottom of the basket. We don't want anything we put in this pocket to whoop, go down to the bottom. So this is just gonna cut that off. This is also a great time where if you wanna divide this up into 
two pockets by going straight down the center, maybe three pockets by adding a couple stitches here. Go ahead and do that as well. Just make sure when you do that, you back stitch really well at the top of these pockets. So as they're pulled on, they don't rip. All right, you have this part done. If you wanna do another pocket on the other main exterior panel, go ahead and do that. Just remember you will have more bulk along the side seams, but it's really not that bad. You are not top stitching over all that bulk or anything like that. So you can definitely add another pocket on the exterior piece if you want. So now grab the remaining exterior piece and let's lay them right sides together, lining up all their edges. And we're gonna clip along the sides and the bottom. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at all the beginning and endings. We're not sewing inside the box corner here, just the sides and the bottom. So once you have the sides and bottom done, now we're gonna box these corners. So just pull the cut corner parts away from each other and we're gonna pull the seams together. Now, because these seams do get pretty bulky, I like to flip them in opposite directions. So instead of opening them, which you can, you can open them, whatever's easiest for you. Figure out what's easiest for you. If opening the seam is easier, then spread it open like this and then clip it. Or if it's easier to flip one in one direction and the other in the other, other direction, then just do that. But whatever makes it easier. It's gonna be bulky either way, so just know that. So I'm gonna clip along this edge. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, flipping them in opposite directions, but I am looking at my bottom seam here. Whichever way I flipped it, if I didn't open it, if I flipped it to one side, I'm gonna make sure it stays flipped that side. I'm not gonna flip it like this. Cause you don't wanna twist on the bottom seam cause that can cause the basket to be kind of wonky. So all the way on one side and then just flip the seam along the side in the opposite direction. All right, now let's go to the sewing machine and sew along both of these box edges at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and the end. All righty, and if you wanna trim down the seam, you can. I'm not going to because it is so bulky, um, but this seam specifically down here is a big reason why if you're using a faux leather or a vinyl, it can get, it can get kind of aggressive. But what we wanna do now is we wanna flip this out, right side out. This is when you're gonna really start seeing everything come together. Just make sure you poke out those corners in there really well. And look at how this basket is looking. This is gonna be so, so happy. Such a happy basket. Oh, I love it. All right, let's set this to the side for just a moment. So grab your fabric straps. Now remember we're doing the like webbing wrapped fabric straps. So if you wanna build your own straps, this does not apply to you. We're gonna grab our fabric straps and we're going to measure half of an inch up from each of the long edges. So half of an inch in towards the center from each long edge and use an air racing marker and a ruler to do this and just mark a horizontal line. All right, once you have that horizontal line marked, what we wanna do is again, wrong side up. You're gonna fold the long edge, the raw edge, wrong sides together up to meet that horizontal line. We're folding it over a quarter of an inch, which is so tiny. It's such a tiny fold over. I don't love doing that, but that's what we're doing. You could always modify these measurements too if you were gonna use something else. With that quarter inch fold over, it's easiest to use a quilt cotton. It'd be pretty tricky to do this with a water waterproof canvas or something. But get that nice and flat. There we go. And just do this for all four edges that you marked. All right, once you have those cut, grab your webbing. And your webbing should be the same length or just a tidbit longer. And we're gonna make our little straps here, which are so cute. So the big thing we wanna do now is we want to center this. This is easiest to do if you have a gridded mat underneath you, because you wanna just make sure this is nice and centered on your strap, okay? So if you wanna be really precise, you can grab your ruler and measure a half of an inch in from each long edge and mark it on your fabric. And then that way you can line this up with those marks. So you see, I don't know if you can see, I measured in half of an inch in from each of these folded edges on the wrong side and I made a mark. And when I take my webbing, it's gonna line up with those half inch marks, just like that. She's gonna, and that's gonna be how I center this. So to keep it in place, I'm grabbing some double-sided tape and I'm just going to run this along the back side of my webbing. So if you're using ribbon, the wrong side, you need to run this along the wrong side of it. Just one piece right along the center and then remove the paper and then just line up your webbing or your ribbon with those marks so that it's centered and just tape it down. All right, now that that's there, you can use your quarter inch or eighth of an inch. Honestly, the eighth of an inch is completely optional. Sometimes I like to use it because it's just less sticky stuff, you know? Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna run this along the side of my webbing. 
So just along this edge. You could also instead run it along the folded edge here of your quilt cotton. If you'd rather do that, you can do that. That'll make sure that it's stuck exactly where you want it. But if you ever have to take the tape off, it's really easy to lift the tape off of the webbing. If you lift the tape off of a raw edge of quilt cotton, it's gonna unravel it, which is kind of a pain. So you see, I added my tape and I'm gonna remove the paper. And then we're just gonna take this and fold it over, taping it in place. Nice and gentle. It's, since it's not interfaced, you can kind of uh, stretch it. So let's not do that, just be nice and gentle. And then that a cute look. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Once again, I'm just gonna add some tape along the webbing and then just gently wrap this around. Again, super gentle here. Isn't that cute? And that's your strap. One side looks like this, the other side looks like this. You can use this strap anywhere. You could make a really long one if you wanted to, to make like a crossbody strap. I mean, how, how fancy is that? It's so cute. So I'm gonna put that to the side while I work on the other strap, just repeating the exact same thing. So once you have them both folded over, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the inner edge of the fold. So not the outer edge where the webbing is, the inner edge of each fold at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. looks so good, so good. I wanna make so many straps like this, Oh, I love it. So now what we're gonna do is just trim down the webbing so it's the same length as the quilt cotton. And if you're using a webbing like I am, that's a polyester or nylon webbing or anything like that, plastic threads, you're gonna grab your lighter and just very gently melt down the webbing, trying not to get the quilt cotton. Cotton likes to catch on fire, but webbing will just melt, but you should be good. There we go. Now let's attach the handles. So grab your exterior pouch. And we're gonna mark one inch away from each side of the side seams. So I'm just gonna grab my little ruler here and I'm gonna mark one inch to the left and one inch to the right on both sides of my seams. So on both sides of my basket. Now we can clip these ahead of time, but I find it's just easier to do this at the sewing machine. Take your strap and with the pretty side, which is the webbing and cotton combo, you're gonna lay that right side to the basket and the webbing strap is going to come just outside of that marked line. So not in here. We're gonna have it just outside the marked line and you can clip it in place if you'd like. And then what you'll do is you'll take the other side and flip it up so that it comes just outside of the other marked line. Now you'll see this is a tight fit. It's gonna pull on it and eventually we want it to kind of flip like this so that it looks like this. So what I like to do is just take this to the sewing machine and I don't even use clips. I just line it up and I'm gonna sew this down at a quarter inch seam allowance first and then I'm gonna flip up the other handle and sew that down just outside the other one inch mark also at a quarter inch seam allowance. Don't use a basting stitch here. Use an actual stitch stitch because you need this to stay in place and this webbing is gonna be pulling a lot. You're gonna do this for both handles on each side of your basket. Okay, so this is what you should have, and in the end what we'll do is we'll flip it out like that, and it has a really cute little pop. Isn't that so cute? I love it. All right, next step is the hardest step. What we're gonna do is we're pretty much just gonna put the lining into the exterior, wrong sides together, and then we're gonna sew them together, except we're gonna fold down the tops and then just top stitch them together. There's really no other way to do it. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are gonna wanna sew them right sides together around the top and then turn it inside out, but just with this divider in here, there's really no good way to do that. I mean, you, I don't even know how you would do it. So we're gonna do it per the pattern and you're gonna be fine. So let's start with the exterior. What I like to do first is grab my little ruler and grab a marking tool and I'm gonna measure one inch down from the raw edge. So just my one inch ruler just works perfectly for this. And I'm gonna mark a line. And I'm gonna do this along the entire top edge of my exterior unit here. Okay, so once I have that mark along the entire top edge, I like to use double-sided tape here, specifically because I have quilt cotton and it's easy to do with quilt cotton. So I'm just gonna take my double-sided tape and I'm gonna run it right along the top of that marked line. 
All right, once you have the tape attached, just start by taking the paper off of one side and then you're gonna take your material and fold it wrong sides down, so wrong sides together, to meet that marked line. You're folding down a half inch seam allowance right here. So just gently take your time, go along and do this. When you come to the straps, you're not like folding the straps like this. The straps will pop up, that's what they're supposed to do. Alrighty, so once you're done, this is how it should look. It's just a nice, clean, folded over edge. Just go around and make sure it all looks the way you like it. If you have any little waves or anything, you can kind of clean them up. So now I'm gonna essentially do the same thing with the lining. However, with the lining, since I used a water-resistant canvas, it doesn't really like double-sided tape, so I'm gonna have to use clips instead of the tape. But once again, I'm gonna go along the outside, so the back side of our lining, the wrong side, and mark a one-inch line around the entire top edge. Okay, so the lining is a little bit easier to do because you're flipping it out towards you instead of in, but since I'm not using double-sided tape, I had to use a lot of clips. If you're using a quilt cotton for the lining, then you can use the double-sided tape again. So now I'm gonna grab my exterior basket. Remember, the exterior is right side out, and then we're gonna take the lining, and the lining is right side in, and we're just gonna insert it like that. And this is pretty much, it's the finished look of it, right? So I'm gonna start with the sides over here. I'm gonna match up the side seam of the lining with the side seam of the exterior and using the clips I already have in place I'm just gonna clip all of this together so take your time here make sure you get your straps nice and straight and you just want to make sure the folded over edge of your lining matches up with the folded over edge of the exterior and again right here honestly patience is key don't rush yourself through this. You're just gonna make a mistake and you're gonna have to redo it, which means it'll take even more time. All right, once you have the edges done, then you just kinda wanna go around the top. Because this is cylindrical or circular, round, whatever you wanna call it, um, you might find that it seems like the lining is too big for the exterior. And that's just because they're the same size, but they're curved around each other. So if you have that happen where it's like, but I've got too much here, you just have to go around and kind of readjust. Straighten it out as much as you can. Bow it in the opposite direction and you'll find that you'll be able to get it all straightened out. Just give yourself some time to do it. So do this for the entire top edge. All right, so now if you have a bobbin thread that's gonna look real bad on the exterior, go ahead and change your bobbin thread because the first row of top stitching is going to be an eighth of an inch from this top clipped edge, but we're gonna top stitch it from the inside, which means the bobbin thread is what you're gonna see on the exterior. So think about that, okay? The pattern does suggest you could just base stitch down at a quarter inch first, and that'll make it easier to top stitch everything from the right side. Because I'm using a water resistant canvas, I don't wanna put more holes than necessary in it. So I am going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the inside, so like this. So my bobbin thread will show first, and then we'll do a second row of top stitching, but we'll come back and talk about that. How cute is this looking? So we have one row of top stitching. We do want to do a second row of top stitching because it's going to help hold these handles down and it's just going to look a little neater. For the second row of top stitching though, it is actually a little bit easier to top stitch from the right side, which is really where you want to top stitch. So we're going to go around and top stitch at a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the top edge here, going all the way around, just making sure you're always checking that you don't have this bottom edge slipping under the needle because that's not the look we're going for. Get everything nice and poked out. Grab your iron and iron it all out nicely to get it looking fancy, like the little fancy bag that it is. How cute is this? And this is so fun. Obviously, my first 
intention of this whenever I first purchased one of these bags that was already made by somebody else was a diaper bag and I just kept you know diapers on one side lotions and powders and things like that on the other side but you could use this for all kinds of things this would be great for your craft room obviously this would be great for your bathroom you could keep all your toiletries in it even when you travel if you want to kind of fold it up and put it in your bag then when you go and you stay at a hotel you can just lay this out put everybody's stuff in there I, I don't know I, I love anything that provides more organization because when you got a lot of stuff it's uh, not fun if it's not organized. So I hope you guys love making this as much as I do. I love these baskets. I could make so many of them. All right, all right. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It is beautiful, right? I had a I had a spooky theme going for this one, the Haunted Mansion theme for that one. For this one though, I just wanted to be bright. For the one we make today, I wanted it to be cheerful, bright, exciting, and I think we accomplished that. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Divided basket, super easy. What did you think of the top? What did you think of the top? I know, I know, I know you're thinking going, there's gotta be a way to sew it together and birth it. There's gotta be a way. Maybe there is. If you find it, let me know. But uh, I honestly feel, again, when you're looking at sewing skill sets, sometimes we get a little too comfortable with one set of skills, right? Sometimes we're just like, I birth bags, that's it. That's how I make a bag, I birth them. If it's not a birth bag, I'm not making it, which is fine. But it's going to limit you on what other patterns you can do. And so the more different set of skills you try, doing something like this, which is like a drop-in lining, doing a bounded bag, things like that, while it might not be comfortable right off the bat because it's not something you normally do, having that skill set is going to just open the door to so many more patterns because there's so many things you're going to want to make or maybe you're gonna have to do it that way. So I hope you love making these baskets as much as I do. Honestly, if I had a little bit more time in my day, I'd probably whoop out a whole bunch of these. Again, these are great gifts. Perfect, you know who they're perfect for? Yep, you're right, teachers. Perfect for teachers. I can't believe I didn't think of that earlier. This is a great bag for teachers because they got a lot of stuff too, right? Trying to keep organized, this would be perfect. Especially elementary school teachers, kindergarten teachers, pre-K teachers. Ugh. Okay, now I'm gonna have to make some more because I got some teachers I gotta make it for. <laughs> I hope you had fun sewing me today. Have a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.